Hello there and welcome back to another video. I'm in the back of a very cold van today um, and what I want to talk about in this video is drawers. Now I actually installed these yesterday but installing them can seem quite tricky so what I wanted to do in today's video is talk you through how to install drawer runners. Now as you can see these ones have been already made and installed. Um, I've sorted all the spacing out on them and these drawers have been inset to the cabinet by 18 millimeters. The reason for that is you can either have uh, flush mounted drawers or you can have face mounted drawers. Now if you're going for face mounted drawers you would bring the runners out level with the edge of your frame to allow the face of the drawer to mount on. I want them inset and the material I'm going to be using is 18 millimeters so I've inset all of these drawers by 18 millimeters so that my face material comes flush um, with the kitchen frame itself. So the reason I like these drawers is one, they're adjustable and two, they're really easy to detach. So when you've installed one of these drawers, you can literally just pull it out um, and on the side here, um, there's a little latch, you click it on that one, you also do the same on the other side and then all you do is you pull the drawer straight off um, and you've got access then to the back of your cupboard. So that's one of the advantages. Um, they're also really easy to put back in as well. They just automatically lock um, by putting the runners back. I get the drawer in, line it up, and then with a little bit of backwards and forwards, there you go, your drawer's now back in, nice and sorted. So that's what we're gonna be covering in today's video, and I'm gonna show you how I lined the runners up um, what type of frames you can mount them to um, and just a few tips to help you get started. So here's our runners. Uh, these ones are just actually from Screwfix. Um, they do a pretty good price. You can get better ones. Um, it depends what you want. So you can actually get these in a range of different um, types of drawer runners. Um, there's some really fancy expensive ones with really nice ball bearings and, and soft closed drawers and stuff like that. Um, in this van, I'm actually going to be installing what's called, um, I think they refer to it as a slam latch. So what I want to do is when I shut that door, the latch is automatically locks in. So for me, a soft close isn't what I want in this van. Um, and the reason for that is it will stop the catch from actually taking. When I push that drawer back, you'll get a slow resistance, which you do in a soft close. Um, and with that resistance, it will probably end up meaning that the slam latch doesn't actually catch. Um, which is not what I want to achieve. I want to be able to um, slide the, the drawer shut and for it just to lock straight away. That way, when I drive off, I don't have to worry about drawers sliding open and um, cutlery falling all over the place or cans falling out of the drawers. Everything will be nice and secured the moment it's shut. So here's the runner and um, what I can do is, I'm gonna probably turn this around, but as I showed you earlier, it slides out and um, if I look here, so actually, oh, it's on this side. So if we just push uh, here up to the top, as you can see, the runner that fixes to the drawer totally slides out. Now I'm gonna flip this around and show you where you want to be mounting these first when they go into a drawer. So uh, let's have a look. Right, so if we look at um, these holes here, you've got two holes, you've got one main hole there that obviously isn't fit, um, isn't adjustable. So your screw is gonna go into the center of that and it's, it's basically gonna lock off, which you don't want in the beginning. So what I recommend is always installing it in um, this section here, um, which allows you to adjust it back and forwards. So as I said, these are gonna be inset drawers. Um, so I'm doing these blind at the moment because I don't actually have the face material to hand. So what I wanna do, is I wanna pick this hole, uh, which means I can actually slide it back or forwards by a few millimeters. Um, so I'm gonna go right in the center of those when I'm fixing these in. Um, and like I said, that just allows adjustment later on. Once you've got that, if you want to be super safe and you wanna secure the drawer down, you can then use these holes as well. Um, and you can actually screw through those um, and that's gonna lock it in place and they're not gonna be moving anywhere. Um, but for me, I'm gonna be using this hole here, which means that I can get that few millimeters of adjustment. Now, uh, there's a few, you can install it um, with the, the drawer runner installed. It's actually easier to start off with if you take that runner out and you just start off with this. So 
let's go over to the actual woodwork and I'll show you how we're gonna get this lined up with your runners um, on the drawers. Now it's worth noting that if you, um, sorry, I can see, can you see my breath? It's really cold in here. Um, so it's worth noting that if you are going to um, have a, a plywood kitchen, um, you would install these drawer runners in a slightly different way and there's a tool that you can buy to assist you with that. Now, in a framework kitchen, I used to think it was harder to install drawer runners. Um, it's actually not and I'm going to show you why it's not and how it's not today. Um, if you are using a plywood kitchen, you can still watch this video. I'm going to show you a tool later on um, and that's going to assist you in, in installing these lovely runners into your um, plywood kitchen. Now, also, if you aren't going to be installing um, slam latches, you might want to go soft close. It's not going to make any difference to the installation. Um, but yeah, these are actually are quite inexpensive. I think these runners, they're 450 millimetres. Um, and they are about £6.59 each. So I think they're pretty inexpensive um, for what they are. Anyway, I'm going to turn this camera around so I'm not getting blinded by, um, by the metal work as the sun's just come up behind me. Uh, let's turn this around. So what you've got here is you've got your um, quick, grip, quick, quick grip clamp and then any bit of plywood. Now, what I do is I'm going to clamp that to the bottom of that piece of wood. So as you can see, I can then put my draw runner directly on top of this piece of framework. Um, and that gives me a really nice base then. Um, it ensures that it's flush with the bottom of that um, support. And then what we can do is clamp that in place, pop it on, and then we can just line it up with the front and screw it in. So I've, um, I've covered using one of these in a previous video. Now this one is a Baco. Um, it's a little, a little adjustable square. And what I love about it is this ruler here that you can actually lock off. Um, and this is great for doing stuff like um, lining up um, hinges and draw runners and all sorts of things. Um, I use this all the time actually. So um, check out the description in the link below. I'll link it for you. They're quite inexpensive, um, but really invaluable pieces of kit. And um, they're great and you can set them, like I said, as a square. So you can, you can check for square wherever you want and they get in nice small spaces. So really worthwhile. They've also got a little spirit level as well. So I cannot recommend this enough. Um, right, so to show you what I'm using these for, um, and yesterday I measured this out. So I set this to 18 millimeters and today I'm going to cheat because I don't want to measure it out again. So I'm going to pop that on the face there um, and then I'm going to go in to the draw runner. Now I can now lock that off um, and that gives me my 18 millimeters um, to use for lining the runners up on the other side. So let's go over and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so now we've got the draw runner in place. Um, I've got a few holes that I can just drill into. Now, um, I don't know if you, you can't see the back here, and um, that's hanging off, so there is one fixing point I'm not gonna be able to get into, but I'm not too worried about that. And um, the reason I've done it like that is, as you can see, the water tank wouldn't have allowed the framework to go past that. However, the draw runner can. So um, I do have a little bit hanging off the back there. Um, so I've got a few points and you've got little viewing windows in the slider. So as you can see here, you can move the slider along um, to get to that um, adjustable screw point. Now I'm holding it down because it's uh, if I move that to the back, it's weighted this side and it falls off. Um, so it's all lined up with the backo square. Now what I'm gonna do is move that window along and it's quite important that when you're um, getting this screw in, what you want to do is make sure it's kind of in the center. Um, uh, what I mean is um, between the top and the bottom. If you go one way too much, what you can do is end up lifting the runner up um, or pushing it down. So try and get that right in the center. And as we said earlier, get it in the center also front to back. Um, the reason for that is uh, if I've made a mistake at the front with the backhoe square, later on I can actually um, let those off a little bit and I can push those backwards or forwards um, to give me the adjustment I need. Now that's in place, so I'm going to take my impact driver here and very carefully without knocking the screw out. I'm going to go in. Now 
Right. Um, that was a bit more tricky, I think, because there is a pin in there. Um, so it's obviously the screws had to move. But if we just check if that slider can still move, um, just for good practice, I'm going to check again at the front with the backo square just to make sure that runner um, is where I want it. And no, it's not. It's um, conveniently moved forwards. So let's open that screw up a little bit. And we need to move that back. So there you go. That can be moved back to there. And that can now be tightened up again. Oh. So there is actually a bit of a gap. I'm not too happy with that one. I think it's because it's hit a nail or a uh, little. So I'm going to take that out. We're just going to adjust that so that we're definitely flush. And we're going to focus on another tie down point because that is just going to keep bringing us back to the same place. So we need to get that screw out. Let's get that out of the way. And let's move our slider forwards until we find the next one. And hopefully this one will go a little bit better. So right in the centre. There's no screws here, so hopefully this will go straight in and give us that adjustment we want. There you go. Now if we check that one. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm happy with that. So as you can see, the first one, uh, as is always the way when you're building vans, stuff doesn't always go quite to plan. So as I've put the screw in the adjustable piece, it's actually hit a pin that I've fitted earlier when putting the framework together. So we've just moved forward a little bit to here. We've managed to get one in there. Now that's right in the center. So that is now adjustable backwards and forwards. We've got a few more that we can get to. Um, we've got another one here and we've got another one nearer to the front as well. So I'm gonna fit another adjustable one a little further forward and that will get us started. Right, so that is now gonna be strong enough to hold our drawer, our drawer runner in place. So I can remove the clamps and what I then need to do is go to the other side. Um, I'm going to need to use a different type of clamp on this side of the drawer and the reason is the runner is now in the way so these clamps won't do it I need something a little bit narrower so I'm going to see if I've got some G clamps laying around and that's going to help us get the next drawer in okay so I've made a mistake I'm not going to be able to do that and um, the reason is the bars there I didn't think of that so the other thing we can do is we can either pin this in place um, or um, we could use a screw and we could just screw that up in place um, temporarily um, do the same thing and then release the screws. Uh, the screws is the option I'm going to go for. Um, if you pin it you can have troubles getting the pins out. Um, screws are a lot easier because you can guarantee that you can get them in and out. So let's get some screws in that and then we'll carry on. Okay, so let me get my head in the way of the sun so you can see this. So as you can see, the piece of plywood is now on. As I mentioned, that has been uh, screwed on, not clamped on, um, but it's the same result and it's gonna keep that in place to get our runners lined up. Right, so I've got the sun in my face now. As you can see, we've got the plywood underneath and we've got the runner um, in exactly the same spot. Um, so all we're gonna do is bring that to the front Gonna get our little backhoe square again <coughs> and we are just going to check that, that comes up to our backhoe square uh, which it does so now that's in place um, i'm going to go along and do exactly the same get the screws in all the way along there and then i'll show you getting the draw in and leveled up
Okay, so now we've got that in place, um, obviously this, this draw slider can now come out. So what I can do is I can release that piece of plywood off underneath. That's our plywood shelf removed. And then what we want to do is get our draw runner here, um, which we took out at the beginning with the quick release, which is at the back here. Um, and then we're just going to slide that inside. Okay. And then I'm going to show you, or try to show you, how this works. So I just need to move the camera back. So we're going to grab our drawer. Okay, so this is the drawer that I've made for this section. Um, so we're going to slide that in. Um, And I, you can't really see from there, but if we go right back in, um, as you can see, it's nice and flush up against these runners and there's hardly any gap there. So I'm happy with that. If it's a couple of millimeters, it doesn't really matter. You can adjust the, um, the runners will take up that slack. Um, but now what we've got to do is figure out how high we want this drawer. Now, this is what I was saying at the beginning of the video. If you make, if you give yourself more slack top to bottom, you give yourself a much better chance of adjusting the drawer and, and it not catching on the top or the bottom. So what we want to do is use a spacer on the bottom here um, to lift that drawer up and that will give us our initial starting point. Um, and then I'll run through another tip with you in a minute. But let's find something to get that space. And what you can do is you can just find the midpoint of the drawer and balance it. Um, and then um, we'll pull the runners out in a minute we push those forwards um, I'll show you exactly what we want to do with those from this side so we've got it in place what I, do, what I don't want to do is affect the drawer I don't want to push it up or down I want it to naturally kind of stay level I want my runner to stay in place but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill a little hole at the bottom of that um, of that runner there that way I know if I get the screw in at that point I can raise the drawer up from there so let's just put a little pilot hole So what you can do there is, let's bring you in closer, um, you can get the screw in and then you can actually raise the drawer. And what that does is it automatically gives us a bigger gap on this side. So we can take that spacer out and that drawer can already slide in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to allow the drawer to drop back down again um, onto the spacer so that so that we can get exactly the same location on the other side of the drawer by pilot hole, by drilling a pilot hole in the lower part of the adjustment so that we're not uneven. Okay, so what we've done is I've gone about halfway up. I've, so I've lift, lifted the drawer halfway up so it's in the center of that runner. Then that's gonna lift the front edge off of the bottom of the drawer. Um, so then we can take our spacers out and obviously the back of the drawer is naturally gonna drop down. So what we wanna do is bring the drawer out um, and again, pop our spacers on there. So, what you might want to do is to keep things even again we'll back off on these we'll let the draw drop to its lowest point and then we can get the pilot holes done at the back half of the drawer and that's just going to stop it being uneven um, so we don't want it kicking up as it goes back inside the drawer so let's drop those down just back off leave the screws in the holes um, it just will allow the drawer to go to its lowest point like so 
and that means that we are consistent all the way throughout. So we've got a hole here. Uh, let's go at the bottom. And then we should have a nice gap. So I'll just bring you around here and you can see what we've achieved. So this is the front of the drawer we've just installed. Um, it's actually gone up a little bit higher than I thought. Obviously at the, at the beginning we had all the space at the top and now you can see that we've got all the space at the bottom. Now that's not a bad thing. Um, but as long as it's not catching, so just pull the drawer all the way out and I can actually see there that it, it actually drops off at the back. So we're too high at the front. Um, so we're just gonna drop those down a little bit because um, as you can see, as we've got come out, there's no gap there at all. And then if you watch as the drawer comes out, there's more and more and more between the drawer and the um, gap, which means we could do two things. We can either drop the front um, or we can raise the middle, um, which is gonna kick the back of the drawer up. So I'm gonna lower the front because I'd like a bit more of a gap at the top here. Um, and that's gonna hopefully give us an even um, trim on the drawer. Okay, so I've just adjusted that. And I don't know if you can see, the, the trim now stays pretty much the same all the way throughout the drawer, um, which means I'm really, I'm really pleased with that. Um, it does actually kick down a bit more towards the back, um, but we're even all the way around. So that's not gonna be catching. Um, and I'm happy that that draw face is gonna be, um, is gonna be clear. Now what you do is with the draw face, you um, obviously measure your square and then I'm gonna cut the draw face to size. And then I'll put that in, I'll put some spaces on the bottom and the sides. And then I'll just pin that into this and then I'll screw it through the back. So that will secure the, the draw facing nice and secure. Um, what you do have to be careful with, if you're going for overlay drawers and you say you've got half a mil gap, you just want to make sure that the uh, kick on the drawer is correct. If it's not, what will happen is, as you say, pull this drawer out. If you then pull that drawer out on top of it, if that one's leaning down and this one's leaning slightly up as it comes out, they'll end up interfering with each other. Um, and I've had that before in a van. So you wanna make sure that your kick is, is really accurate if your drawers are overlay and if they're say a millimeter or uh, two millimeters gap between the two. Uh, it doesn't matter so much in this case because the drawers are inlay and you've got a good 33 uh, millimeters there, plus you've got your gap either side. So you're never gonna be that far out with an inset drawer. Um, so that's how you uh, install a drawer. I hope that video has been helpful, like I said. Um, if it has been, please give it a thumbs up. Um, consider subscribing to the channel. Um, I'm not the most regular poster in the world, but I do like to try and help other people out where I can. So if you've got any questions or comments, then please drop them below and I'll get back to you. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. And I hope that you manage to install your drawers um, with some nice runners sometime in the near future. Take care.